Making a beat using only stock Logic sounds. You may think that you need to go out and buy some expensive sample packs to make some great music, but at the end of the day, good music is good music, and it doesn't matter what it's made with or what app you use. If you're new here, I'm Kevin Zuckschwert. I'm a musician and music teacher here in Denver, Colorado. I make all kinds of videos about guitar playing and audio and video production and gear and demo reviews. So if any of these things interest you, consider subscribing to the channel. All right, let's go. All right, this sound I'm using is called the bell string pad. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start with a melody line on the keyboard here. And I'm just going to noodle with this for a second and see what I've got. I've got a general chord progression idea that I want to try, so let me see how that goes. Okay, I'm going to record that. That seems pretty decent. Okay, great. So what I've done here is I came up with a chord progression that's called a cadence pattern, and the chord sequence was an A minor, then I went to a D minor, and that's in second inversion, and then I went to E major in first inversion. So that's an A, a harmonic minor chord cadence, and then I created a melody from those chords. All right, let's see what this sounds like so far without the uh, metronome click. Okay, sounds great. Okay, so what I'm thinking now is I want to add another layer to this, and I'm going to try this classic analog pad here to add a little more depth to this current sound and this current four measure pattern. So let me see what I can come up with here to, to go along with that. Alright, so here's the idea I came up with to layer this with. Let's try and record that now. Okay. Alright, that sounds good right there. Let's take a listen. That sounds pretty good. Let's check that out. Let's move on. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add another layer to the classic analog pad that I used here, and I'm going to just double that. So I'm going to use this sound called Above the Clouds, and that sounds like this. Okay, but I'm not going to replay that. I'm just going to tap on this clip that I've got here, and I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to paste it into this new track and that way it'll play exactly the same chord progression as a pad to kind of layer this and fill this out a little bit. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, excellent. That sounds good so far. Alright, what I've done now is I've added this drum kit called Absolute Zero, and I'm going to give it a try and just start adding some layers, starting with a hi-hat and a kick drum.
Okay, what I actually want to do next is add a clap track to this. I'm going to try and add this here to overlap this with the hi-hat. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Now let's try and add a kick track to that. Well, let me check the quantize feature on this first real quick to make sure it's not quantizing that. I don't want it to quantize that because I like the way that I played it. Let's take off the quantize. Let's try and add a kick rhythm here to it. Alright, let's record it now. Okay, that sounds great. Let's keep moving. Okay, obviously if you're a good singer, you could layer on your own vocal parts here, but I want to show you how you could use this app just to get some vocal things, some vocal additives, if you want to call it that. And what I've chosen here is in the voice section of the samples, and I've chosen this uh, Amanda Improv Phrases 1. So I've dropped that in here on track 76, it's called here, you can see down here. And I've added that in at the fourth measure of this loop. And I had to make some adjustments on the pitch, and I didn't want to waste time on camera doing that. It was too much work to figure this out. But take a look here on this pitch scale. I raised it up 373.3335 cents, which I wish they would make that more obvious um, on this pitch shifter. Like, that's really difficult to figure that out. But it worked, and it's in pretty close pitch, I would say. So let's check this out. And also, I want to add um, a nice reverb to this track. So let me do that now. And you can see how that works. So I'm in this section here. I'll add audio effects. And I'm going to go find a reverb here. Uh, chroma verb is pretty nice. Let's check that out. And I'll find some presets here that work for this. Ambience maybe. How about a large ambience? Let's try that. Let me just solo that track. Okay, that sounds pretty great there. I like the vocal room and I increased the decay time to give it a real deep ambience effect. And let's go back here and see what that sounds like with the entire track here now. Let's extend it out so we can hear that trail off.
Excellent, it's sounding good so far. All right, so I took a few minutes to get my creative flow going, and here's some of the ideas that I came up with to use uh, to alter what we currently have. I took this um, section over here, and I took the pads out right there at measure five, just for that one section. And then you'll notice I got rid of the drums from two to five, right? So that way we're just starting out with the pads and the, uh, and the melody. And then the drums come in here at five, and then the drums come in completely the same loop that I had previously. Uh, that way it kicks in right there. And then the vocal part I added down there on track uh, 76 at measure nine there. I doubled that up there as well. So check this out now that I've made these edits. These stock logic sounds are insane, right? I hope you learned something today. I hope you can use these tips and tricks in your own songwriting and your own creations. And let us know in the comments below if you do. We'd love to hear it. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And tap that bell so you don't miss anything. And check out this video right here next. I'll see you next time.